2016 mm. draft happens. We're having Ron SmackDown finally separate one more time. You don't yep. get drafted. No, what man. is the plan for this? Because if for a few weeks, you do try to get a job from different uh, companies and different shows. But is that the plan? Or someone thought, again, a ha-ha joke of like, oh, we'll just not draft him. Brother, it was a ha-ha joke. And they were literally going to put my ass on the internet later on in the night saying that SmackDown picked me up. That was the plan. Then JBL comes to me, and JBL's always had my back, and I love that dude. I know a lot of people want to talk shit about him, but he's always had my back, and he's always been good to me. Um, he came to me, and he was like, hey, kid, listen, I got a, a pitching idea for you tonight, and they're going to go for it. I was like, oh, what is it? Am I getting drafted first? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and he just was like, you ain't getting drafted at all. I was like, what the fuck? Why would you pitch that shit? What the hell, man? You know, like, why would you do that to me? And he just was like, listen, man, people's going to remember who got drafted number one, and that's it. No one else is going to remember who was two through 30. No one's going to remember. But I guarantee you, you not getting drafted, being the last thing that they see, the last person on camera is going to get you sympathy. It's up to you what you do with it. And I just was like, holy shit, you're right. And brother... Afterwards, I go up to Ed. Ed's like, nah, man. He's like, we're just going to put you on the internet saying you got drafted to SmackDown. I said, hell no, man. I said, let me be a free agent. I said, let me try to get with SmackDown. Let me try to get with Raw. Let me try to get with SmackDown. I said, let me go everywhere. I said, let me just try my best and just get a job, like begging and pleading, like we can do some awesome vignettes, you know? And Ed literally looked at me and was like, brother, I think you got an idea there. I think, I think we can do that. He was like, all right, man, we ain't going to say that you got drafted. And then we just started talking, man, and we started putting stuff together. And that whole free agent thing started getting over. I mean, to the point to where, like, the whole part with, you know, me and Brock with the kids and then Rhino coming and helping me and then us getting the titles and the contract, like, the whole, like, that 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 part with JBL looking at me saying, you're not going to get drafted, kid. It's up to you what you make for it. And me being like, you son of a gun, you're screwing me, <laughs> you know, made made a storyline that, like, made people really get sympathy for me and get on my side, man, to where it was just he knew exactly what the hell he was doing. I was just in the dark being like, oh, man. And then just, you know, a little lighter of them, light came on. I was like, oh, oh, I see now. Okay, let's run with this. But if it wasn't for JBL, man, that whole free agent stuff wouldn't even happen. That was his pitch, his idea. He just smartened me up to it. Well, it's a good. It was a great pitch. And then the "I got kids" is one of those lines that became a T-shirt, became a huge part of your character. Even shooting vignettes yeah. with Rhino at your house with all your kids. Yeah. But Brock Lesnar doesn't give a shit about your kids. Right. According to, I know. Were there plans for you and Brock to have more than that interaction? Because again. Your free agency. I got kids. Smackdown yeah. with Rhino. There's a lot of momentum building for you. Are there plans for more than just Brock Lesnar saying he doesn't give a shit about your kids? Man, that was nothing else after that. It was literally a promo, and then I literally forgot a line, and I started shooting from the hip, and I got kids came out of my mouth. And next thing you know, and you know, Brock like never talks on the promos. Like he never talks, but he just took the mic from Paul and said that line, and the whole ending of the promo type seg was like me telling him like i have to fight you type deal and then as soon as he said the whole i don't give a shit about your kids it was just like a where the hell are we going here like i haven't even said that i was going to fight him or something he was like turn around and walk away and then i was like all right this is where we're going for it and then that's when i took the swing and he kicked my ass you know i i wish if i would we would have planned all that i wish like i would have got one hit on him you know, just so the crowd would have been like, whoa, and then let him kill me. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But it was like one of those things where, like, I was kind of lost. He he had a little plan. I forgot my lines, and I threw out a line to where he was like, oh, damn, that's pretty good. And then, like, I guess Vince loved it, so that's why I got a T-shirt and everything. So, yeah, it was just like one of those things, like, if, you, if you're stuck on television and you're live and you have nothing to say, you better say something. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, it turned out great for you again. Again, you, you got a T-shirt, you got those vignettes with you and Rhino, and, and when SmackDown and Raw did split up, you and Rhino eventually form a tag team. You win the SmackDown mm -hmm. ta tag team championships. 
what's your relationship with Rhino before this? Are you friends? Is this no, pitched? Man. Like, how, how is this put together? Brother, they literally had me going for the IC title. Like, the whole first pitch was me going after Miz. And it's supposed to be like Hollywood against Hillbilly type thing, you know? And it was, it was pretty much how they described it to me. It was like Matt Hardy and MVP back in the day. Okay. Uh, they would like try to one-up each other, and they were tag teams. And then at the end, they get along with each other. and then But the Miz jumps me, and then I get the title shot, and I beat him type deal. And I'm just like, holy crap, yes, I'm going to be IC champion. That's the only title I've ever wanted, you know what I mean? And then next thing I know, man, like – we're doing some stuff, this and that, and we're doing some segments and promos, and then it just stopped. And he went, I think, to wrestle with Ambrose, and then me and Rhino got together. And then Vince was, like, telling me, like, you know, you're not going to go for the IC title. I want you to be the first ever SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions with Rhino. I got this idea and that idea. And I'm just like, no, man, I've already held the tag titles. I need to get on that level. I want to be on that level. But – with me bitching and complaining, he talked me into it. But fast forward so many years, like, Rhino is one of my best friends now, you know. So, like, I love him to death. Like, I got a best buddy I love it for years instead of, you know, a little something I can put on the wall and say oh, I, I won once, you know. So it worked out good. Yeah. No, it did. Mm-hmm. I, again, very entertaining stuff on SmackDown. And th- <laughs> but, then, but then, of course, as time goes on, we had – you were about to be released by the WWE, and according to mm. online, it's because of COVID, and there wasn't enough money coming in. Of course, if you have no house shows, you have no shows, you can't have no fans, you can't make money. Yeah, very true. Um, is that what you were told when you were released? And before that release, though, you and Drew had a, like a moment in the ring together. And that to me was one of those like, oh, this is I, I remember the 3MB because it felt like it was so long ago, but it really mm. wasn't that long ago. So what were you told about your release? And then that drew moment is that drew and you faint, like saying like, let's, can we, can we do this for one final goodbye? Well, that, that drew moment happened after I got released because I got released first and well, me and whoever else, you know, there's a big list of everybody. Yeah. And then my contract was coming up from like, when you get released for WWE, there's a 90 days of no compete, you know? So you, there's three months of you can't do nothing. Literally, maybe two and a half months of my release. I only have two more weeks before then I can go and do whatever I want. That's when them um, they called me and was like, "Hey, man, like we got an idea for you, you know, to come in with Drew because he was feuding with uh, Dolph Ziggler, and he was like, we wanted you to do a segment with him, and then we want you to go and do this other segment with Dolph and this other segment at a pay per view." And I said, "No, <laughs> I said you don't fired me." I don't want to do it, man. Like, I have no interest. And I hung up. And it was some writer. I didn't even – I don't even know his name. And if he remembers me saying this, I apologize, you know. Um, but then I got another phone call. And it was a buddy of mine that was a writer. And he pitched the idea. And I said, bro, I have no interest. And I have no interest at all. And then that's when McIntyre called me. And Drew's like, come on, mate. Listen, you know, like, it can probably leave for you getting a contract again. Or, you know, at least you can be on television with me. I'm the champ now. And you can get a nice little rub before you go and hit the indies, you know, whatever you want to do. And then I just like, bro, I don't want to do it, you know. But then, of course, we kept talking and he talked me into it. And we did it. We go down there. Um, they wanted me to do three things. And I told them I was only going to do the one. And that's what you saw was uh, me coming out with Drew. And this was in the whole COVID days to where – they were like cutting stuff and you can edit stuff and everything. But that whole thing that you saw was one take start to finish. They ran with it. We did it and it was done. And I was kind of impressed with that because like while I was there, like they were doing like a few takes here, a few takes there. And I just was like, man, like I have so much feelings right now in me. I'm just going to throw up all this shit. <laughs> so I, I kind of did. 